feels as though it were only yesterday when I was sitting in my office, enjoying a cold glass of a manly detective drink, when I thought to myself, what is the secret of good animation? What makes these sequences of still images appear to be living? What gives them heart and soul? Like anybody in my situation would do, I decided to start a YouTube web show to get to the bottom of this. Let's discover together what makes good animation breathtaking, good storytelling engaging, good acting believable, and good designs appealing. Let's talk to the people that show us how it's done, and look at the tools that help us to make dreams come true. But first, the news. Everybody should know by now that Frozen was a huge success. It brought in a whopping 1.4 billion US dollars, which makes it the largest grossing animated feature film of all time. So obviously there's something that resonates very well with the audience, as you can see with all those let it go videos on YouTube. It also won the Oscar for best animated feature film. However, the Hollywood Reporter anonymously interviewed seven Academy members that were supposed to vote for the best animated feature film category. Turns out that only three of them voted at all and they voted for Frozen. The others abstained because they don't watch animation and they didn't bother to see Frozen or any of the other films. Even if you do think that animation is for children, is it not your responsibility if you vote for the most important film award of the whole world that you just sit down for some hours and watch these? Anyway, back to the film. What do you think about Frozen? Do you think the success is deserved? Let us know in the comments. The popular website CG Hub shut down without any warning and previous notice. So everybody who had stored their portfolio, their galleries, their bookmarks there lost them and didn't have the chance to back up the data at all. There are some artists who apparently lost their only copy of art. While it is highly unprofessional for a website to do this, I think there's a big lesson in this for all of us. Um, because we all save data and images and mails on third-party websites and they could be gone all of a sudden. So yeah, don't trust the cloud. The news trend in Hollywood apparently is going to a graveyard and digging up some old cartoon characters for a reboot. The first one in the line of reboots is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle live action film. And the trailer for it looks actually pretty promising, a lot of action, very Michael Bayish that could actually work with the turtles. But then you see this. It's just a mask. See? Don't freak out. Right? Hollywood, it's time we have the talk. The Uncanny Valley talk. Here to educate you, Wolf the Frog. What the f Are you like serious? That's a guy that is clearly a human dude with like ugly ass makeup on or some shit. Ugh, you know it really pisses me off. I auditioned for that role. I did. I went up to the f***ing director, what's his face? I was like, yo, I will be your new turtle. And he's like, no, dude, you're frog. You can't do it. And I'm like, f*** you, b***. I'm frog. Yeah, I'm frog. I would have done a great job. Because I would not be in the mother f***ing uncanny valley. So you know what? If you have a dream, you want to be something, forget about it. Give up. You're not gonna win. Some stupid ass man and some stupid ugly makeup is gonna come and he's gonna take your dreams and he's going to shit on them. And then he's not even gonna flush the toilet when he puts your dreams and the shit in the toilet because that's where it goes. Okay, thank you, Wolf. I thought he wanted to explain the. Um... Anyway, I'll do that myself. This graph describes how a character design appears more appealing and lifelike the more human it looks. An industrial robot, for example, has little human appeal 
A teddy bear and most of our beloved cartoon characters have significantly more. This is the sweet spot in which most cartoons and animations try to stay. Notice that motion strengthens the illusion of life. No still object can compete with that. Even the cutest stuffed animal fools nobody. But for a moving teddy bear in Toy Story, most people are willing to do the suspension of disbelief and see him as a living character. If we now continue to make designs more realistic, the appeal curve makes a plunge into the so-called uncanny valley. Scientists suspect that characters who look almost completely realistic but not quite remind us of a human corpse. And now motion makes it even worse because a moving human corpse is one of the most creepy and weird things for our brain that wants us to stay as far away from death as possible. If you get beyond that point now, the appeal rises again, but that is very hard to do. Everything from the shaders up to the animation has to be perfectly realistic to get you out of the uncanny valley. The easiest and safest way to achieve that would be to just do a live action shoot. So if you can avoid it, you shouldn't go there. However, there are some good examples how filmmakers got around this. If you take Gollum, for example, he looks ugly but also appealing. And that is mostly because they didn't go hyper-realistic. He has much larger eyes that help to emphasize his expressions and his ugliness comes from the control of the designers. They wanted it to be that way. Another example in a similar manner is Avatar where they also gave the humanoid aliens bigger eyes and slightly different proportions and but ah you are not in the uncanny valley anymore. Of course you can use the uncanny valley as a stylistic device in art films like Chris Lantra does in his masterpieces. In the case of the Ninja Turtles I'm pretty sure that they didn't want to go there and probably should have done something to make them look more like well like turtles. There also will be a reboot of the Tom and Jerry series. Unfortunately, it has been criticized in the animation community as looking rather unprofessional. Something very defining about the old cartoons was the flashiness, the volume in the animation and the drawings, which is totally absent in this reboot because they just use some flat shapes. Also, the background compositions are just dreadful at places. So you can see that just taking famous cartoon characters does not guarantee a good film. Another thing that was highly discussed was the trailer of the new Peanuts film by Blue Sky. Something very distinctive about the comic strips is their simplicity, the reduced lines, the absence of color and shading, and just this brilliant ink line. To bring this into CG is of course very difficult and highly questionable. The obvious reason why it has to be CG is because the studios think that this is what the people want to see. They want to get their Pixar shading, so they gave the Peanuts a Pixar shading. Which in the still frames just looks like a weird Photoshop collage. Look at this close-up of Snoopy. His fur looks like the cutout from a children's book and his nose is just stuck in there. and. Why does it have to be so detailed at all? I mean, it works fine with the simple lines. That's what we want to see if we think about the peanuts. But then the animation pleasantly surprised me. I think it really feels like how these characters should move. The pose to pose animation style and the posing just fits the peanuts perfectly. Also, they put a lot of effort into making the characters be able to, to shift their shape a lot, which is very difficult to do in CG. I mean, if you, if you look how they pop from the front view to the, to the side view, this seems to be a completely different mesh. So they definitely put a lot of thoughts in it. And if you would trace it with Schultz's ingenious lines, it would look like the comic strips again. So that leaves me a little optimistic about this film. In the end, of course, it will be the story for all of those examples that decide if those films are good or not. What do you think about those tries to bring back old cartoon characters? Will you give those films a chance? How do you feel about that everything nowadays has to be in CG and 3D and stereo 3D? Do you miss 2D or do you think it's a thing of the past? Let us know in the comments below. 
And that's it for our first news show. As you might have guessed, there will be more videos on this channel in the future. So if you don't want to miss a single one, please subscribe and also please like, comment and share. This is Ferdinand Englander for Animator Island. Take care, goodbye. So you know what? Are you guys watching this Write a letter? Do people still write letters? Write an email to Michael Bay and say, Hey bitch, this is ugly as shit. I want to see the cute frog. And then I can write to Michael Bay when he cries and calls me and say, Hey Rolf, I made a mistake. Come back. I can say, F you. I can say, no. No, I'm not doing it. You had your chance. Go. Jump off a bridge. Not that he hurt me, no. It's just... It's just... I need a moment. I'm sorry.